The year is 2023. All of the talent in the NFL is in the AFC, especially with a recent trade of Aaron Rodgers to the Jets, and league interest is at an all-time low. Dictator, I, I mean, NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell, has since decided to enact a fantasy draft to try and rebalance the league. With most owners being unhappy, all of them wanted to sell instantly. But in the fine print was a clause that made all owners forfeit 50% of their company value if they tried to sell during a league-wide reset, which all but one decided was way too steep. With the Jets being sold for a fraction of what they're worth, Roger Goodell also had to enact a rule as it wouldn't be fair to the rest of the owners to have the Jets with their new owner paying less than expected to have the same talent level on his team as the rest of the league. So with that being said, he would be stuck with lower end talent and forfeit their first round draft pick for this upcoming rookie class. With his low point in the franchise, the Jets' new owner realized interest would be very, very low in his team and decided the only way to get this team started would be to rebuild it from the ground up and relocate it in a new city. With the rebrand and the new roster, he was also going to need to find the best coaches to right the ship, and there is none better for the job than Mr. Dingles. This is where we start our journey. So welcome. We're here. Fantasy draft. We're booming. Pick eight. Who cares? Because we are not allowed to have a very good player here. Now, I'm not exactly sure how I want to do this, but I know that we are not allowed to have very good talent. Might still want to go quarterback kind of early because we're paying these guys quite a bit of money regardless of the points. But man, am I excited to get this started. If you guys are, maybe leave a like, maybe subscribe if you're new. If you're not new, really appreciate continued support on the channel. We're finally here with the Fantasy Draft Relocation Franchise. Let's go. If you guys want to see episode two of the series tomorrow, 500 likes, that's doable, right? I know it's late in the Madden season, but start of the franchise series and it's the week. Come on, right? By tomorrow, it'll be up. If not, maybe Monday. I don't know, but... Let's let's head on. Boy, if you want to see a sick looking roster, here it is. This is the team we will be using for this series. We've got some talent, of course. We do got a couple of rookies. Mr. Duggan, six foot two, twenty-two years old rookie. Got a bit of speed, looks pretty decent. I don't know. Ooh, ideal sense of pressure. Okay, so whoever made him is kinda my friend. Uh, of course, we don't know who's going to be the starter as of next season. Free agency is a thing. I don't imagine there's going to be anyone crazy good there since it's a fantasy uh, and every other team is restarting, obviously. But we also have the draft as well. Zach Evans, the running back, uh, decently young, 92 speed, 92 excel. A uh, little bit of trucking, a little bit of juke move. Obviously a bit raw, but, you know, potentially the franchise back. Who knows? I mean, obviously it kind of depends on how these guys play. Wide receivers, I mean, we basically need to replace them all. Puka Williams, the wide receiver three, he's just happy to be here. Uh, offensive line is a struggle, but one of my favorite players here is Caleb Jones, the 6'9", 370 guy. I did up his strength a little bit because he had like 82 strength, which if you're 6'9", 370 and your strength is 82, you're just not an NFL player. And then defensively, it's debatably worse. <laughs> this is... Uh, squad. Of course, we have a little bit of athleticism and height at uh, the DB spot. You know, Zion McCollum, he's going to be 24, so who knows if he even has anything uh, for us. But super athletic, great catching. He's, he's big, obviously. And then the free safety, uh, who is obviously a rookie from real life, uh, six foot four, 23 years old, but once again, super raw. And he'll be, you know, what is it? He's 23, but he's about to be 24. You know what I mean? Like, I'm thinking of the ages in the future. Because that's when we'll use them. Because obviously, we still have to relocate. Which I didn't think about it for the coach. I need to be an owner. <laughs> Alright, so I wanted to find a scout for quarterback wide receiver as the highest level scout. Could not find that. But I think we... Did I have a quarterback corner? I thought I did. Quarterback safety might be our best bet here. We definitely need quarterback Middle linebackers, like, eh, I'd probably rather have the safety because middle linebackers are a little easier to scout than safeties are. Tight end, maybe? Let's actually go with the wide receiver or the tight end quarterback because we need, we need weapons. Uh, wide receiver is definitely a scout position. We need those. So if we can get, oh, I really like inside, outside, though. 
the whole offensive line. That's kind of nice. Maybe we just get two scouts for a uh, wide receiver and call it there. Well, I'm sorry, everyone getting fired here, but, uh, you know, things have to happen. I need, I need my wide receivers, man. Well, there you go, wide receiver corner. All right, so we have uh, wide receiver corner, strong safety, wide receiver, inside, outside for the O-line. I'd say D-line, if we can get one, would be next. So, like, DT, D-end, or, you know, I guess outside. So, Lulu Hernandez is, like, my last case. But if I can get DT, DN, that would be amazing. Amazing. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Salvador Ortega. That's our DT, DN right there. Although, what were the what were the other quarterback options? Because tight end's also not that hard. Like, basically, you just get yourself a fast tight end and call it a day. Uh, but there's not really many options. Safety, quarterback, quarterback, safety. That's also another position where it's like, it's all about speed as well, so I, I guess we'll just stick with it. So, of course, we are uh, not the richest team in the world, so we are going to be going with the basic futuristic stadium, uh, and we're uh, we're headed on for the relocation. 110 mil, who do we have to resign? So, Jalen Naylor is now a 71 overall, apparently. There's uh, you know quite a bit of players here. You know Our roster is made up of these guys, so we kind of need to keep a lot of them. Uh, Jalen Naylor, about to be a 24-year-old, uh, he is technically an 80, a 72 overall, uh, pretty decent release, I, I think I'm gonna give him the deal, I think, I think we need him, I think we need him, who else do we have here, so little Jordan Humphrey, that was kind of a meme pick, I, if he was around, I would've stuck him, but, uh, he's not, so, uh, and stuck him, it sounds like I'm gonna hit him. I'm, I'm going to assault the, uh, the man for doing nothing wrong. Uh, but a lot of these guys you kind of expect. You know, if you guys have done franchise content, you've watched franchise content, and, you know, you've played in franchises, you kind of know who's staying and who's not, right? Some athletic guys are staying, the guys with potential are staying, whereas the guys that aren't are, you know, getting the hell out of here. Playoffs, who would have thought? We missed them at 2 and 15. Uh, we will have to take a look at the team. Uh, CJ Stroud looking pretty good, but we'll take a look at the roster, the schedule. Even though we don't have our own first round pick, uh, due to having to forfeit that, it still does benefit us, obviously, having a very bad record, as we will have a high second round pick. But let's take a look at our uh, season, see who maybe, ooh, maybe has a career here and maybe doesn't. So, uh, Max here with a bunch of interceptions, but also a bunch of yards. Touchdowns were okay. Completion percentage under 60 is terrible. Zach Evans is yuck. Uh, Back at running back situation, not really. I mean, there was just no run situation. Jalen Naylor should be star. Everyone else here, I don't know, maybe, but probably not star. O-line, a lot better than I would have thought at this overall. Two 100-plus tacklers. Sack totals low, but expected. Interceptions, pretty fair. Kicking was awful. Punting was okay. Kick return game was useless. Punt return game was useless, even though it's supposed to be uh, Rico Gafford there. Let's take a look at the award wins, though, for the league. Joe Burrow, the Buffalo Bill, uh, is the MVP of the league. CJ Stroud, the Raider. Aaron Rodgers, the Giant. Okay, so there are some names here, dude. There are, I mean, it's all over the place, but uh, as you can see here, these are some of the award wins for our conference, at least. Rookie of the Year went to CJ Stroud. Obviously, we're going to have the real life rookies uh, mixed in there as well uh, from last season. I was debating on making it where I was going to have the, the CPU draft be uh, the actual draft, but I was like, you know what? Even though it's going to mess up the kind of like the ages of them after year one, it won't matter. And I want to get to the CPU class. Uh, I don't want to play a whole season where the rookies are all real life rookies. I don't want to deal with that. So I'm going to, uh, you know, I did it this way. I feel like this is the better choice. Um, and yeah, I mean, I might have to change a couple of devs. I already lowered a lot of the overalls and I also may have to change some of the ages, but we'll see about that. That's not really the biggest issue right now. The biggest issue is building this damn roster up. So MVP Burrow has led his team to the Super Bowl going up against the Saints and the winner of that being the Buffalo Bills. We are now officially relocated. Let's take a look if we have any star plus devs to start out this team's relocation. Jalen Naylor with those yards doesn't go up and dev. I got to make sure I do have re uh, regression off, but just in case, wow, really? That season, I've had guys that are barely over a thousand yards go up in dev. That season doesn't get him to star. I don't know a how. 
How is that even possible? That is ridiculous. And then defensively, the only dev up is Chance uh, Campbell. Or is it? Ch yeah, it is Chance Campbell. I mean, he's okay. He's got some athleticism, but pretty much all the linebackers we have, their change of directions are awful. Uh, but obviously, not a great season. You know, some guys went up in overall, but as far as like devs, everyone is still normal dev. We also did re sign the majority of our players, so we're uh, pretty set with that. I think we're losing a couple of guys, but nothing, you know, nothing crazy. Just one last glance over just to make sure. Uh, we might be losing Puka, though, which really makes me sad. Uh, a couple of names on this list, but uh, I'm okay with losing the players. I mean, I want to keep Puka, but I just don't think it's going to happen. So what's his offer? He wants a two-year four? Two-year 6.56. I like the size differential. Um, okay, sure. See if there's anybody in free agency. Maybe get ourselves uh, at least like one, I wouldn't say superstar, because that's not going to happen, but maybe like a... A guy that's actually in the 70s, besides Jalen Naylor, who's already 24 and somehow didn't go up in dev. So tons of money. Brian, okay, what the hell is this? What the hell is this? I might I might pay a lot of money for Brian O'Neill here. I don't know what it's going to cost, but there are a few names here. Byron Jones is just useless. 30-year-old superstar where he's great, but he's not going to last that long anyway. So there's just no point. Got to go for guys that are at least going to be here for a couple of seasons rather than just one Brian O'Neill is a lot of money, though. He is a lot of money. How much is it going to cost us? Because obviously no one wants to come here anyways. Man, that's like like 90? I could really use a right tackle. Even if we had just one good offensive lineman, I'd at least feel okay about that one spot. Do I have to pay him a four-year 100? I might. And even the four-year 100 doesn't... Oh, my. What's his interest? Vertical zone scheme... Wait, did we not? Are we not in a vertical zone? Wait, what does his scheme fit? What does he want the scheme fit to be? What's his? Wait, wait, wait. How do I know what his scheme? Oops. How do I know what his scheme fit is? He's a pass protector, so vertical power run would get him more likely. I don't care. I'll cheese it. I <laughs> I need anything I can get. If that's gonna help me get Brian O'Neill, I absolutely will cheese it. Plus, it also could hurt us for, like, if we wanted, like, a wide receiver that needs scheme fit, you know? So, we'll see. For your 96, that's the highest by far. For your, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do it, dude. Why even make it a four-year 96 when you could just make it a four-year 100? Everyone's happy besides the guys that work with the money. We spend the money, they figure it out. And, of course, that's that is also still me. If you couldn't tell. As far as quarterbacks go, the best option would be Davis Mills. I don't know. Like, he could be a franchise quarterback, but for that price, I'd rather just stick with the youth we have. Ooh, Traylon Burks. He's so raw, though. He's so raw, but Traylon Burks could be fun. Uh, all the other guys are pretty old and not great. I think Corey Davis is decent, but he's like 28, 29. Once again, another guy that just won't be there in the end. Jaden Reed shouldn't even be here in general, and he's also a lot slower than I would have wanted. Calvin Austin is pretty cool, too. All right, we got to we gotta think about it. Ooh, Channing Tindall's here. I'd be willing to give him a one-year deal worth $2 million. So there's still more names I want, but these are the five names I'm going to be putting on our list. We should get most of them, not all of them, though. Uh, and nice. Those are the three I wanted the most, specifically O'Neal, obviously. That's the huge name. We have ourselves a super beast, 89 overall right tackle, 74 overall Traylon Burks. We'll see what happens. It's not a crazy deal. It's a two-year 10, so he's not locked in for life. And then Tyndall's obviously on that one-year deal. Want to add some more talent, though, if we can, because there are still some pretty usable players here. Oh, we're down to just one. We ended up getting Marcus Jones on a two-year 10. He is basically only a slot corner. I'm never going to have him on the uh, boundary, so uh, very... Uh, not traditional corner, if you will. Uh, and then Tyler Batty, I would like to have, and he does join. So we added a little bit of talent. Still a really bad roster, but at least we added a few spots that aren't the worst thing in the world anymore. Let's uh, fill that lineup and see where we're, uh, you know, how we stand. Glad that we're in the same division as the Super Bowl winners. Oh, that's super fun. Uh, I still think Zach Evans is the number one, especially by overall, but Batty at number two isn't the worst. Price was actually not bad either. He's like super young. Uh, okay, he's 24. I thought he was 22, but never mind. 
Uh, not bad, but yeah, with that, uh, ugh, maybe not. <laughs> that age is a little iffy. Jalen Naylor probably is the number one wide receiver with Burks at number two. Probably Puka at number three, but wide receiver still on the list. You know, there's no one that's like guaranteed to play anywhere. Jalen Naylor could easily fit in the slot, obviously. So, you know, if we find ourselves a wide receiver in the draft, that's where we're going. Uh, you know, tight end, obviously nothing set in stone, but I do like Cole Turner. He's decently young, and of course, he is huge. Uh, not the fastest guy in the world, but he's kind of fun, so we'll see how, what happens there. O-line's a shambles besides O'Neal, who I think might play left tackle because it's the hardest position to play, and Caleb Jones, if he's starting again, is a right tackle who has, like, no athleticism. Uh, and then defensively, there is a lot of questions. I, I mean, honestly, at this point... You really just take franchise changers. You don't really care what their position is. You just take a player that's going to impact the team like crazy. Also, it'd be nice to know what draft picks we have before we, uh, you know, go crazy here. Let us see. We have 22 or 33, 65. Uh, where did all this come from? Where did all these six rounds come from? Uh, we're not supposed to have that many, so I'm going to have to start sending these back. I think we're going to keep two of them. So you already know we are not going to be trading up. We already know these things. So we are moving on to our next pick. There was a quarterback there, but I really don't care. He's like He was like a late first. Maybe he's still there. Uh, oh, for, some, for some reason, I thought we didn't have a second round pick. I, I don't know why. Um, but even though I don't care. Oh, round one talent. Interesting. I uh, don't think we need a quarterback just yet. We're not really ready, and there's just no point. Uh, but a lot of two to threes. This wide receiver is decent looking. Not the most athletic, but he's six foot three. Has the round one grade. Also, thought that speed was going to go up. Kind of scouted him at the combine level. I will not be going for him. He is slow as hell. Now, McDougal's not much faster, but I'd much rather go for McDougal in the third round than to take uh, a six foot three, like 57 speed wide receiver. And the Raiders are giving me kind of a trade I need. I, I just need a bunch of third round picks, simply put. And uh, that's kind of what they're giving me. I really ha I have a DT that looks nice. That's a bit earlier than that. But, I mean, we're not going to, you know, the, the whole Rome and, you know, being built in a day... You know, very impressive that they were able to do that, but we are not going to be able to do that. And my DT, who's a 2-3, to three, is still there. I think I have no choice but to grab a Matthew Cheney, a finesse, hidden development trait. We need that. We need it. And uh, we have our first hidden development trait player of this franchise relocation. Nice. And it really sucks. There's this A break tackle, A trucking, uh, really fast running back. Good speed. Excel's not great in fairness, but good speed, uh, four four one. But I can't take him. I just end up. I can't end up taking him. And then you know, also this Carmichael guy, who's pure speed, uh, obviously isn't going to be great for trucking. But pure speed could be the true franchise running back. Can't do any of that. I think with this pick, man, there's so many good players. If I can land Patterson. Cody and McDougald, I think that would be a win, but we also need to land these two linemen at least, even though I don't think they're great. Wilkerson, I don't know why I said it like that. Uh, Wilkerson's definitely the better of the two, but at the same time, uh, you know, we need all the linemen we can get. Uh, hmm, we're risking players here by trading now, but I think we need to. I think we need to move back, like, even if it's just like seven spots to gain a fifth round, we kind of need it. Because if we're going to try to make these plays for these third rounders, we're going to need to trade up. We're going to trade at 65 this, 164 next for 72 and 136. I'm just hoping none of my guys are gone at that pick. Uh, like I said, we need every trade down we can get because we need to make a ton of trade ups. Really hope our players are not gone. Please don't be gone. I need the wide receiver and the tight end desperately. The linebacker we could probably live without, but the wide receiver tight end we need. Going to go with the wide receiver first, I think. Now, nah, our, our tight end position is really bad, so hopefully Cody is there. He is. Bryce Cody, he's not the craziest, greatest player I've seen. Didn't even get to scout him fully, but uh, six foot six, 21 years old, 273 with a 46440. But more importantly, great speed, great excel, great change of direction. Wish his jumping was a little bit better in fairness, but Bryce Cody is going to be the pick. Please be hidden, and he is jumping, like we said. Wow, 73 is not good. Another really good player, though. 
which is amazing. Let's go to trade up with the Rams, and I don't know how much more trade ups, if any, we're going to be able to pull off. Even trade, trying to get up to 73 here to grab that wide receiver. Wide receiver technically isn't our biggest need, but McDougal does look pretty good. He's got pretty good athleticism, and obviously he uh, has the, the good catching. I'd imagine the catch uh, that he has is A, but catching traffic is tougher to have anyways. So, 4 4 40, which isn't amazing, but good speed, elite excel, great agility. Give it to me. Give it to me. Okay, that's not what I wanted when he said give it when I said give it to me, but uh normal development trade. I mean I can work with that excel, but agility is a little iffy, but he obviously is young and that's kind of the big reason we took him. I really want that middle linebacker, but we could just rock with what we have. Uh the old line we can't lose either. We need one of these guys at least. We need to build up this offensive line. We also don't have any edge. What about uh, Mr. Manny Patterson? He's pretty good, too. Obviously, we're not going to be able to make this trade up. Great speed, good excel. Oh, man, the great change of direction. I might have to trade up for him, too. I don't know how I'm supposed to get up there, though. We don't have really many picks, and I can't trade our third next year because that's like basically still guaranteed to be like the first pick. Let's try to get to 15 and see what happens. There's really not much more we can do, though. Wasn't the best draft, wasn't the worst draft. It would be nice to finish out with this linebacker, but I think he's going to be taken soon. And we're kind of we're kind of risking him because I just can't really get up to this spot. And there he goes to Philadelphia. Yeah, I mean, honestly, even at pick one here in the fourth, I don't even think I can take one of those linemen. I might have to trade down again. I imagine that means they're going to be gone, but what can you do about it? So I just made a really bad trade. I just traded back to one... Uh, I don't even know what it was, but 23 spots to gain a six, which I know we're really late in here, but I mean, that was not a good trade. I mean, even if it was like the first pick in the sixth round, it wouldn't be a good trade, but I suppose the lineman's still there. So is that the biggest need? 21 years old, 6'5", strong, whatever. Wilkerson, another normal development trade. Probably was still automatic starter, but that is still an L. I also probably should have looked at the players around him. To see that we actually were choosing him over anyone else. Because there's some pretty decent players here. Like coming 6'3". Okay speed. You know the great, the good speed. Great Excel is up there. Eddie Parson. Uh, 6'2", 21 years old. Decently fast. If he's there I'll take him. Don't think either of those players are like trade up candidates though. And if we want a new edge. Trailer's like our only option. He's 22. 6'2 is a little small. But very athletic. Um, hmm. Do you go to the start of the next round, maybe trade up for him? I don't know if he's worth it, though. I went one spot because I didn't want to trade with the Rams again, and he's gone. I'm going to the sixth round. Damn it. If there's even anyone here. Oh, do we actually get a high third off of them, or a high sixth round pick off of the Browns? That's, I guess, better. Uh, oh, the corner and the safety. I think the safety was better. I think the safety was better, and I think he's a bigger need. Eddie Parson. 91 speed, 90 excel. We can live with that. Jumping's a little bad and change direction's not great, but pretty athletic, I suppose. And then I I think we take the corner as well. Other than that, it would be a trade down. I think we're going to trade down from the sixth round, which isn't really going to do much for us anyways. But let's grab Mr. John Cummings, 6'3", 2022 years old. 91 speed, 93 excel for 6'3". is pretty good. He probably will start just because he's an actual rookie and he's probably the youngest corner on the roster. Like, they're all inexperienced, so it doesn't really matter. Damn, nobody's budging on a fifth next year. These teams are dug in. Let's get the Niners sixth and seventh, so it, at least we're automatically gaining in that case, but I can see why they wouldn't want to trade me a fifth, because this is a pretty late pick, but maybe now it's like, oh, they're trading to other teams. Please, just give us something. We'll give, us the, we'll give you the fifth. We don't care. Two seventh. That is interesting. Is that one of our sevenths that we just gave them? I don't know how that makes any sense. We didn't give him any seventh rounds. But we have a bunch of seventh round picks, I suppose. See if we can get a six for this. Take that kicker that I had uh, with one of the other picks. Um, Raiders? Let's go to the pa Patriots. I almost said Packers, but let's go to the Patriots. Then a 21. What are we going to get at 21? Another trade down, perhaps. Don't know if that kicker is going to be there or not, but he looked pretty decent. He had elite kick power, I believe, with a B accuracy. Can't really do much better than that. What else can you ask for? Trade of the Colts for uh, a seventh round pick. Kind of just pushing everything to next year because we need uh, you know as much trade up capital and just draft capital uh, you know as possible. And we could see here that we have another seventh round pick peeking out. Let us. Who's wait? Well, who are these guys? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. 
A zone coverage kind of... Nah, that speed only says solid, so I don't think he's worth it. What about Maynard? We need a linebacker kind of badly. He's 23. He is way more athletic, but 23. If he's 22, I would have taken him and just risked it, but 23 is no point. Might as well just rock what we got. And Claiborne's also 23. Uh, depth at that position wouldn't hurt, but he is really, really bad. I think we just pass on all those guys. Give me a damn kicker. So Dexter Samuel, uh, 23 years old, but elite kick power with B accuracy and A awareness. Uh, 97 kick power. So we got our franchise kicker at least. I'll grab Matthew Wilkins. He's undrafted projected, but he is pretty fast. He's six foot two. Why not? 86 speed, 91 excel, only 70 change of direction though. Let's go to the end of the draft. Let's take a look at uh, these overalls. Not going to look at the devs, obviously, but uh, let's take a look at the overalls real quick of... Uh, our draft class, we got a decent bit of players. we got a little bit of talent, I think. Eh, maybe not so much talent. I am want to, uh, wanting to see that wide receiver we passed on, though. That was 6'3". So, Chaney was 71 overall, but he was hidden. His finesse is 78. We can live with it. Uh, block shed is terrible. So, our run defense, as you would have expected, is going to suck. He does have swim move. I guess bull rush is cool, too. But swim move, which is massive. What are these catching traits like? He's got jump ball ability. Nice. Run after the catch. You know, kind of sucks he doesn't have it, but I don't really care too much. Route running's raw, but very good catching out the gate already. He is solid. Uh, injury concerns a little bit. Uh, what else do we have? McDougald. Let's take a look at my boy McDougald, who is only 68 release. Deep route sucks, but he's a pretty good short to medium route runner. You can't hate it. Uh, aggressive catch, catch, uh, run after the catch. Those are things that are obviously great. Anyone else, uh, the guard who is only a 69 overall normal, will be a starter no matter what, though. So, decent power blocker, awful finesse blocker, just enough athleticism. Uh, Parson, I guess, 65 overall, at best, a backup, I'd say, at this point. Or, okay, so 65 overall, but that zone coverage is good. He might actually have a starting spot with that zone coverage. That zone coverage may have saved him. And then we talked about Cummings probably starting just because of the age, 22 years old. Not great a man. Solid zone, though. He's an interesting player. Uh, I do want to see the, the wide receiver, though, because he uh, did have a round one grade, but there was no way I was going to make that play with him. There also was a super fast wide receiver in rugs. Don't know where he was. I don't know if I just seen him and I missed it. I don't even know, but uh, where was he? Damn, he went to 24. Normal development trade, but look at this speed. 98 speed. Insane release. Decent catching. I mean, that's pretty absurd. What about the wide receiver we passed on? Because he was supposed to go pretty high, right? Because 75 overall. 89 speed is not bad. He is hidden. 89 speed, 90 excel. He's pretty good at catching. I mean, unless he's higher than superstar, I don't really care too much. He's he's like a better release, Traylon Burks. He's really not that crazy. Yeah, I mean, I could live with what we got. And then for the final player I wanted to take a look at is that middle linebacker, Patterson, to the Eagles. 72 overall. Of course, he's hidden. Uh, decent catching, bad jumping, bad block shed, good zone coverage, athletic. Let's take a look at what that dev is. Unless he's superstar plus, like I said before, with the uh, other player we're looking at, doesn't really matter. Yeah, so, I mean, it was kind of a weak class, to be honest. But we don't know what dev our guys are. We'll obviously have to find that out when we're actually down the line, but it was an okay class. What could you really expect? No first-round pick, and we needed pretty much everything, so we went with best available player at most positions. Mainly mismatches as well, but there are a lot of moves we need to make. There's a lot of players we need to release. There's a lot of players we need to test. Names we need to change and numbers we need to change, so it is going to be a long process, and I think that is probably where we're going to cut that process off right here uh, for the first episode of our Sacramento Miners Relocation Fantasy Draft franchise, we are now a 70 overall. That might change. It might go slightly up. might go slightly down. But the one thing that is constant and for sure is that this is going to be a challenge. Anyways, if you guys are enjoying this, you enjoyed this episode, and you're excited for more, maybe leave a like, maybe subscribe if you're new and mean ton to me, especially on the first episode. If you're not new... I uh, appreciate your continued support a lot, and you're probably waiting for this franchise. Maybe follow me on Twitter, Channel Picara, second channel Picara plays for non-mana content, which we're playing Jedi Survivor right now, uh, which probably was uploaded uh, yesterday. Not sure what we're going to upload tomorrow. Might even be another episode of this. 
Uh, we've done a lot of rebuilds, so I might take a little bit of a break from that. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, maybe there's a maybe there was a like goal. Maybe there's like 500 likes. I'll do episode two. I don't know. But anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you guys come back for next video. But until next video.